Greetings. Um, there is a topic I want to talk about today, and I want to go straight to the point. It's about oligohydramnios. Oligohydramnios. And what does oligohydramnios? I'm going in this uh, video. I'm going to talk about the causes of oligohydramnios, the symptoms, and uh, the complications that can arise from it, and the possible treatments. Now. What is oligohydramnios? Before I go into what it means, eh, I want to tell you something about the amniotic fluid. You know when you when you get it, eh, when you take it, and when you, you are pregnant, eh, there is a fluid called the amniotic fluid that your baby swims in. Eh? Your baby swims in it, and eh, your baby also drinks it, urinates it, and that amniotic fluid is contained in the amniotic within the amniotic sac eh? the fluid is where your baby swim in and it has its function eh? apart from your baby drinking it and urinating it eh? it is rich in nutrients right and it's it's half as a cushion for the baby so that the baby will not get injured the baby's skin will, uh, yes skin will not get in direct contact with the womb so it's like the it's like a balloon feed with water which your baby is swimming in eh? that is the amniotic fluid and it's contained in the amniotic sac now um, apart from that uh, serving as a cushion it also nourishes the child and hydrates the child now amniotic fluid is when is it produced amniotic fluid is produced uh, from around 12 weeks from around 12 weeks uh, and this volume starts increasing as the weights increase. From 12 weeks, it increases till it gets to 36 weeks. Now, when it gets to 36 weeks, now here you see where the issue is. The volume starts decreasing. Amniotic fluid is formed in, um, in, the, in the 12 weeks. At 12 weeks, it starts increasing as the pregnancy progresses because the baby is getting big now and the fluid need to increase so that um, the baby can swim in it and it will also nourish the child. Now, um, at, th at 36 weeks, it starts reducing in size, uh, in volume. Um, another thing I need to tell you about anointed fluid is that anointed fluid prevents the baby from getting injured because it serves as a cushion for the baby to be swimming in. Now, in oligo hydramnios, eh? oligo means little, few, small. In oligo hydramnios, uh, there is little of a uh, small volume amniotic fluid. And there is small volume amniotic fluid. And in, uh, when there is small volume amniotic fluid, the baby will not be able to really swim through and it can affect the baby. Now, what are the causes of um, oligo hydramnios? But before I even go into that, I need to let you know that about four percent of pregnancy, four pregnant, four percent of pregnant women, eh, will experience oligohydramnios in during the course of their pregnancy. Now I want to go into the uh, now. It is the placenta. It is the placenta that produces amniotic fluid. It is the placenta that produces amniotic fluid. I want to let you know now because we'll go back into that. Now what causes oligohydramnios? If there is any problem with the placenta, it can cause oligohydramnios, that is small volume of uh, uh, amniotic fluid. It can cause oligohydramnios. So placenta insufficiency can cause oligohydramnios. Eh? Number two is maternal diabetes. Yeah, for women that have gestational diabetes, eh, one uh, uh, sometimes you will notice they will notice that uh, they have uh, um, oligohydramnios. Because in gestational uh, uh, diabetes, there is also placenta insufficiency. So I said number one, placenta insufficiency. Number two, gestational diabetes. Number three, dehydration. When the woman is not drinking well. I'm not saying special fluid, just water. So you need to be drinking well, drinking a lot of water when you are pregnant so that you will not go and have oligohydramnios. Number four. Now, you know I said that the baby drinks amniotic uh, fluid and urinates it out. Now, in uh, oligo, when the baby, the baby itself has birth defect, congenital birth defect, the woman uh, can have uh, oligo, especially birth defect when the kidneys are not properly formed, or the bladder, or the pathway through which urine is formed. 
eh? and it's, it's uh, not well developed. The baby, will, the woman, will, the woman will have only gland. You know why? The baby only swallows and do not urinate. And imagine in that amniotic sac, you keep on removing fluid, swallowing fluid, and not re returning it. You know what will happen now? The volume will decrease with time. So that is how bed the fed that affects the kidney causes oligoadrenals. Mm? That is a uh, for now. So I said uh, maternal diabetes, placenta insufficiency, dehydration, uh, congenital bed defects like uh, renal genesis when the kidneys are not well formed eh? can cause oligoadrenals. Some uh, women that smoke can develop oligoadrenals. Women that smoke, women that take alcohol. So they can have oligoadrenal. So and women that use herbs, you are using herb when you are pregnant. You need to stop it. Eh? You can also develop oligohydramnios. You understand? Now, um, uh, smoke, use alcohol. Then um, you are not drinking well. You use herbs. You can have oligohydramnios. Then there is something, and uh, maybe um, yes, infection, infection, infection. When you already uh, you have infection during pregnancy, you can have oligohydramnios because your it will it might affect your your placenta. Then when the placenta when the uh, amniotic sac is ruptured, there's some leakage. When there's some leakage in the amniotic sac, you know it's pouring out now through the vagina. You are leaking. It can cause small volume because you are losing. It's leaking. Now imagine a bucket of water is leaking. The volume will decrease with time, right? So leakage can cause uh, oligohydramnios. Then how do you know you have oligohydramnios? Symptomatically, eh, for the woman, um, you will notice that the, your tummy is not increasing in size. Your tummy is not increasing, or your tummy used to increase in size, now it's reducing in size. So that's how you know you are having oligoandrandos. Eight months pregnancy, you will notice that your tummy is not big, it's small. And the, best, the safest diagnosis for oligoandrandos is through a scan. When you do an ultrasound scan, you go to the hospital, you do an ultrasound scan. You, the doctor will tell you that ah, this the amniotic fluid in, your, for, in which your baby swimming is small, and that is oligohydramnios. Now, what are the complications? That is, what are the bad things that can happen from oligohydramnios? It can cause tibet, eh? It can cause tibet, can cause miscarriage. Hmm? It can cause tibet, can cause miscarriage. It can cause birth defects. You know why? Um, because um, there is no fluid for the baby to swim in. Eh? The baby's skin is directly in contact with the womb, and the baby can have injuries. Eh? The baby can have injuries, bands, eh? the hands are too small, joint stiffness, because the baby is not swimming, the baby is not moving around, the baby is just in one place. And eh? even low birth weight, intrauterine growth restriction, the baby is not growing as expected. Um, that is what it can cause. Then, uh, then it can, okay, I've mentioned still birth. Eh? Because in most cases of oligo, it can also cause premature delivery. Because when the woman is noticed to have oligoadrenals and it's and it's early, and the pregnancy is late, let's say 36 weeks, 34 weeks, the doctor will tell you that ah, let's deliver this child, let's do a cesarean session to bring out this child, so that when the child is born, the child will be put in incubator. So that is the complication that may arise. Is there treatment? Yes, there is treatment in early stage of oligoadrenals. There's um, um, an attempt is made to put bath fluid into the amniotic sac, but sometimes, most times, it's unsuccessful. And so that's why most times, a woman with oligoadrenals, they end up losing the baby. Eh? Now, if it is closer to delivery, as I mentioned, 36, 37, 38 weeks and the rest, um, the, um, the doctor will tell you that they need to do C-section for the child so that the child can come out. So that is how it is. There is one thing I forgot to tell you. A pregnancy that has spent too long, like pregnancy that is at 40 weeks, 42 weeks, and the rest, can cause uh, oligohydramnios. Uh, post date, post date pregnancy, like pregnancy has taken too long, baby is not coming out. It can cause, you know why? Amniotic fluid stop, uh, the production of amniotic fluid stops at uh, what now? Stops at 36 weeks. So after that time, not, it's not produced again, so it will be decreasing. I want to thank you so much for your support so far. Eh? Please, uh, um, I appreciate your effort to make sure this page grow. I also want, I also plead with you to help my YouTube channel to grow. The name of my YouTube channel is Nigeria Health TV. Um, help it to grow so that I can reach at least a thousand subscribers. You have been wonderful so far.
Bye-bye. You can put your comments in the uh, question in the comment section. Bye-bye.